Now I'm with two other new Irish MEPs. They are to my left, Maria Walsh from the Fine Gael party, of course, former Rose of Tralee, and Claire Daly to my right from the Independence for Change. Claire was, is an MEP for the Dublin constituency and Maria is an MEP for the Midlands Northwest constituency. Claire Daly, congratulations. Thank you. First impressions, you're out in Strasbourg and you've been in Brussels over the last few weeks. What do you think of the European Parliament? Yeah, I mean, look at it, it's, it's a bit overwhelming. It's incredibly difficult to find your feet, I think. There's, uh, I suppose, moving country in essence in any jurisdiction is hard. Uh, when you're shutting down one office, opening up another, bringing some staff, getting new staff, trying to find accommodation and trying to get your head around an incredibly monolithic institution or institutions, well, yeah, it's pretty overwhelming. I mean, they say it take you a year to two years to get used to it. I don't know, we'll hopefully do it a bit shorter, but uh, it's baby steps at the moment, it really is. Yeah. Are you excited about being an MEP and representing your constituents out here? Yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's going to be incredibly challenging. Uh, I think for us, it's clear that we're going to have to work even harder. We're not afraid of hard work, but work harder to get your voice heard and get it out there. Um, I'm not sure how we'll break through on it. We have to be a bit ingenious on that, I think, but uh, we won't be found wanting. But how you break through, I suppose, the lack of communication between the citizens of Europe and these incredibly bureaucratic institutions, you know, it's almost... My impression is that it's almost designed to keep you on a treadmill of going around in circles and then you forget what you were really here for. So excited is maybe an overstatement. It's going to be challenging, but very much looking forward to it, for sure. I, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, you might have said something like you're going to shake things up out here. We're did, going to did try. That? We, we yeah. would, well, it's certainly not our intention to come here and get absorbed in sort of bureaucracy and forget why we're here. It's about finding a way to bring the information of what's going on here back to the citizens at home before decisions are made really to a great extent and trying to I suppose champion or popularise a lot of those issues so that citizens are informed about them because it's that disconnect that has given the, the problems that the European Union has I think is that the What citizens are the main are issues you'd like to pursue over the next few years? Yeah I mean look at I mean obviously the first one that's come on is, is the trade deals and it's an absolute slap in the face for the new European Parliament and the electorate of Europe let's be clear about it where people voted across all of Europe uh, on the issue of the environment and climate change and at the 11th hour in the dying days of the outgoing Commission's constitutional mandate they sign off on the Mercosur trade deal uh, which on its own uh, advice and, and research says is going to be incredibly destructive for the environment in terms of climate change and in terms of small farmers both at home and uh, abroad so those issues um, obviously um, you know the uh, onward drive towards uh, militarisation in uh, Europe is a key concern of us. The fact that budgets are being now spent in that area on a much greater level on the border securitisation and so on at the expense of other social funds. So th those issues will be important. Um, I am hope. Well, I am on the Transport Committee and the Libe Committee and I know sort of even in my own area like um, aviation and that so there will be a lot of issues there uh, to deal with on that. So look, looking forward to the details on that.